The three pillars of Assassin's Creed are combat, stealth and parkour. And whilst I've already made a video going over every combat and stealth system in the series, I have not talked about the most obvious one, and that is parkour. This video is way overdue, so that's exactly what I want to do in this video. Now I'm not going to be lazy and make this a video where I group the parkour systems together, like Assassin's Creed 3 to Rogue having its own segment, or even the RPG trilogy having its own segment, as that's a very basic way to look at the parkour in this franchise. I mean after all, there's currently 13 mainline entries, and whilst a few of the games are using the same engines as their predecessors, there's a lot more to factor in when talking about the parkour, such as the world of each game and how it aligns with parkour, how enjoyable the parkour is in that respective game, the difficulty of it, the different mechanics, the animations and so on. So with that said, in this video, I'm going to rank every parkour system from each mainline Assassin's Creed game. If you have not yet seen my stealth and combat rankings, then I would recommend watching that after this video. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Let's start off in Dead Last, and honestly these last 3 games could also have places with each other in a way, but I've gone with Assassin's Creed Odyssey to be right at the bottom. This game is the perfect example of how not to do parkour, in fact it's pretty apparent that the RPG trilogy of games have removed parkour entirely and replaced it with climbing. For me, both Odyssey and Origins are similar in terms that they simplify the parkour systems to an extremely basic level. That's why you would often see so many people getting into the franchise by starting with the RPG trilogy. You see, in any of the older games, we were able to have momentum in our movement whilst parkouring from building to building or ledge to ledge. Odyssey completely removes this level of freedom. The game gives you the ability to climb anything and it does not require a ledge or a handhold within its walls. It is pretty stupid because that type of climbing should only be done by the likes of Spider-Man and if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure Cassandra did not get bitten by a spider. Now although realism is not something you'd often associate with Assassin's Creed Odyssey, it still is very odd knowing that you can climb surfaces that are straight up flat 90 degree vertical walls or mountains with no handholds at all. The idea was that all you need to do is approach a wall and hold down one single button and tada, that's basically the gist of parkour in this game. Another reason why I place Odyssey dead last is because of the demigod ability that allows either Cassandra or Alexios to quite literally never take fall damage at all. For one, this makes parkour feel so irrelevant as instead of descending down a building or a mountain, you can now simply just run to the edge and jump off without any risk at all. And this is not good because parkour in my opinion needs to have that higher risk high reward feeling to it and Assassin's Creed Odyssey is anything but that. The feeling of risk is never present at all in this game, especially knowing that the game will never make you take fall damage off a building or a cliff. Instead, if you try to straight up run off any of these, the game stops you right at the edge and eliminates the risk that I adore. Now, if we're talking from a very basic standpoint, yes, there's no denying that climbing giant Greek statues and taking in the views of the world is stunning. But to get to these views, was it fun? My answer is no, because all we did was hold down one button and let the climbing do everything for us. It also did not help knowing that the setting of the game did not accommodate parkour at all. Each building in a city was spread out quite far from one another, and there were no environments at all in the game that you know would make for a good parkour spot. For me, I need to see different parkour paths and routes to take, and Odyssey lacks any of that. So yeah, dead last is where I place the parkour of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Now as I previously said in the Odyssey segment, this goes hand in hand with that game. And for the second last spot I've gone with Assassin's Creed Origins, a game similar to Odyssey in terms of how not to do parkour, or should I say climbing. This game shares many similarities in its parkour to Odyssey, you can climb up pretty much anything whether it's a flat wall with no ledges or a mountain that has no ledges or climbable spots. Thinking of it now, this game is probably the worst time period in terms of how parkour would work because most of the world is just a massive desert that lacks any type of verticality or dense urban environments, so parkouring isn't exactly the first door for Origins. The mechanics of this game are more focused on exploration and freedom over complex parkour mechanics. Parkour in this game does have its moments, especially when climbing the giant pyramids or going into those ancient tombs. These are kind of glimpses of what could have been but ultimately what is not. Now this game is I believe the first game that no longer has a run button. I could be wrong with that, if I am feel free to correct me in the comments below. So pretty much in Origins you just basically are always running whilst holding your directional stick forward which I didn't really like as it makes the free running so generic and simple minded. Origins surprisingly allows you to side eject but only when you're at the edge of something. This game has changed the way back ejects work compared to the game before being Syndicate, making them less useful because they don't help you climb faster or go higher anymore. Oh and also, the ability to control your movement going down isn't as useful now. And just like I mentioned in the Odyssey part, this game also prevents you from falling off buildings or cliffs, as it would also stop you right at the edge and eliminate that high risk high reward feeling. I feel like the best comparison I can give for Origins Parkour is Black Flag, because both games share similarities in its free running and parkour. 
Now something that I feel like I need to say but I also don't is to do with zip lining. Am I the only one that finds it a bit strange when bike is zip lining down something? I mean he holds the rope with his goddamn hands instead of you know maybe a hook. I'm pretty sure holding the rope with your hands would burn your palms and provide you with some pretty excruciating pain. Anyway yeah second last in terms of parkour belongs to Assassin's Creed Origins. Okay now we're moving on to the last game of the RPG trilogy and that belongs to Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Now just because I place Valhalla as the best out of the three, that doesn't make it necessarily good. In fact as I mentioned near the start of the video, these three games can all go hand in hand with each other in terms of where they rank in parkour. The world of Valhalla when compared to ancient Egypt or ancient Greece is more lenient towards parkour. But that doesn't make parkour work in Valhalla's world. The parkour system in Valhalla leans more towards a simplistic approach and lacks any effort or skill. The only new addition that this game adds relating to movement is the ability to now slide which adds a slight variation to free running but you'd really use it and you wouldn't even notice it. The main issue for parkour in Valhalla is that most of the game is set in the open countryside of 9th century England where there is not much to climb except for cliffs and random structures. When we're in a city the buildings are often smaller meaning only two or three stories high and it's apparent that the game lacks the tall structures that were common in the earlier games of the franchise. Also the ability to now sprint is back which was something that was removed in the two games before so that's a bonus I guess but that also does not warrant a higher place in the video. Fall damage, while it was pretty ridiculous in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, is now shifted back to actually taking damage. But parkour is quite slow and heavy, which feels like it's due to Ava having such heavy and weighted armor. So yeah, there's really not much to say when it comes to Valhalla's parkour. It's not good, but it's also not not good to be warranted a place any higher in this video. Okay now let's move on and move towards a game where parkour is definitely not the main focus and that is Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Now you may say since I have Syndicate here in the video that also means Unity should be here too because after all both games share the same engines and relatively similar animations with each other. Whilst I do agree with that, there is a lot more to it. Syndicate's setting is focused on a more broadened time period. This meant that the wide streets of London would feel empty and lacking in any opportunities for parkour, making free running seem somewhat pointless. The game introduced us to a pretty important addition being the grapple hook. This addition was the key part of navigating around Victorian London. Now personally, I was not really a fan of the grapple hook in this game. While the addition of it in the game improves movement, it falls short in fully making up for the limited environments in some parts. Its limitation stems from the restriction that it can only attach itself to specific predetermined points on a building which ultimately prevents free aiming. This tool which kind of reminds me of Batman's line launcher allows both the fry twins to quickly move across buildings by forming a zipline between them. Oh and the fact that we had to stop moving entirely in order for us to attach it to a building meant that parkour in Syndicate was a lot more slowed down and streamlined to a very basic level with this addition. However, the reality of it is that Victorian London in my personal opinion is too big of a city for Assassin's Creed. It feels like parkouring up those massive buildings in those times would feel more like a chore. Now in terms of actual parkour, the game has difficulty with it because parkouring from one spot to another feels a lot sluggish and awkward. The jump button was removed entirely from this game, preventing you from making jumps that the game thought would not be safe. As I mentioned multiple times now, this lack of a jump button eliminates all the risk involved, making Assassin's Creed Syndicate a very basic and beginner friendly game for parkour. The game also simplifies several movement mechanics, such as side ejects being much less frequent and automates actions like vaulting and sliding without needing player input. Entering windows which we saw was a feature in Unity is restricted, making navigation through London much less thrilling because some aspects are automatic. There was also the fact that either Jacob or Evie would shake their head when attempting to wall eject from a high place, which once again gets rid of that high risk that I very love. However, despite these negatives, Syndicate's parkour does have its positives. For one, by using parkour down and holding the stick sideways, we can achieve a smooth dismount from the side of a building, which automatically orients the camera in the direction of the dismount, facilitating continuous running without manually adjusting the camera. There is also tapping circle or the B button before hitting the ground which allows for a roll, which is easier to time in Syndicate than in Unity. But apart from that, it's not a parkour system in my opinion that warrants any higher place in this video. Now this is a funny one, before the recent update that Assassin's Creed Mirage had where it improved on back ejects and side ejects, allowed Basim to reach heights faster and also cross bigger distances, I would have placed this game as the exact same as Valhalla. 
But after all, this game was intended to be a DLC for that game, which meant not many tweaks were involved during development. Oh, and that reminds me, when I made my video ranking which Assassin's Creed game had the best stealth, I added Mirage to that video before the game was even released, and I placed the stealth quite high up, so I like to think that I got that one spot on. Anyway, this video is about the parkour, not the stealth. Mirage takes us back to a more dense major city to explore. It's a much more involved approach to the parkour that we saw in the RPG trilogy, where it was simply climbing surfaces that did not seem climbable. Maybe that's why I placed Mirage over any of the RPG games, because it simply returns to a setting where there are so many buildings, zip lines, and structures to parkour. On. Personally, I felt that the movement of Basim in Mirage is slightly more fluid compared to the previous entries, but he does still feel slow and rigid, especially when compared to Unity where descending a building is noticeably smoother and easier. In Assassin's Creed Mirage, I feel like the movement should have been more seamless. One major issue with Mirage's parkour is its descent mechanic. Descending buildings feels neither quick nor fluid, often leading me to simply jump from heights and not land as intended. This then also adds on to the fact that Basim ends up dropping rather than climbing down because he doesn't seem to want to climb down properly. However, what also feels like a negative is the inconsistency in free running. Sometimes Basim runs as expected, which is all good, but then he might vault over an obstacle or climb something ever so slightly, which would then suddenly slow him down and force him into a walking animation. And also, when I'm sprinting and trying to climb down quickly, he ends up crouching once he's on the ground, forcing me to stand up and press the run button once again. It feels a bit clunky and not well thought out. However, I can appreciate the update that Ubisoft released recently where they fixed many aspects of parkour. The back ejects and side ejects were definitely improved upon, where the range of them is much more apparent. This update also lets you climb buildings much faster and jump a lot bigger distances. Yes, it's not perfect, but it was a step in the right direction. Aside from that, the game does well in other areas. The indoor speed doesn't feel overly fast, and moving through the city is fairly smooth. The game was described as a return to its roots, and whilst I don't agree with a lot of that statement, I can see certain aspects where that statement is true, and parkour and stealth were definitely part of it. Now this one might be a surprise to a lot of people. A lot of you might see Assassin's Creed Black Flag as a game with very mediocre parkour. And whilst this game does have its fair share of both negative and positive aspects of parkour, placing it here in the video feels about right. Now I could have easily just bundled up Assassin's Creed 3, Black Flag and Rogue and placed it here as its own segment, but I feel like there's a lot more that needs to be discussed when talking about the parkour in these particular games. For one, Assassin's Creed Black Flag is similar to its predecessor being Assassin's Creed 3. There is no denying that, but out of the three, I like to say Black Flag falls behind. The peak of Black Flag's parkour for me lies in its cities, especially Havana. The way its design suits parkour very well in this game as a lot of the buildings are not the tallest and are also densely spread out. The rooftop traversal is fantastic and there's an abundant amount of parkour opportunities. It's good to see this, especially knowing that Black Flag's setting is not a setting that accommodates parkour at all. After all, it is a pirate game where the main focus is naval traversal. Assassin's Creed Black Flag's parkour to me feels much smoother than any of the older games. But do remember I said smoother, not better. That's why it's here in the video. The wider range of environmental elements in Black Flag that you could parkour through made it quite decent to my opinion, especially in quite a few of its level designs. Take the tailing through the bayou mission. Yes, the tailing part with the ship was absolutely boring, but the parkour sequences we had when on foot made parkour feel a lot of fun in this game. Of course, this is a personal preference and you may think otherwise. Now, despite the few positives, there are also a lot of negatives that come with the parkour in Black Flag. For one, sprinting in Black Flag is only possible when you're holding the right trigger, which means that jumping would also be the right trigger. This is a change from before where in those games you could choose to manually sprint and jump separately. The option to jog while doing parkour has now been removed, which means you have less control over your movement. Now this is considered both a negative and a positive. I say positive because that high risk high reward factor is present, where it is quite easy to accidentally run off buildings because you can't slow down when approaching edges. Another negative is that you cannot grab onto ledges if you're moving backwards anymore. You can only grab ledges when moving left, forward or right. I guess the main issue is really more so the setting of the game. The game's environment is not well suited for parkour, except for cities like Havana and maybe Nassau and Kingston. But outside of these cities, parkour is pretty much useless because when else would you use it? You can't exactly parkour in the middle of the ocean, and the ocean is a large part of the game. Assassin's Creed Rogue is in a similar boat to Black Flag when it comes to parkour. In fact, this game was the hardest to rank in this video, because I honestly could not decide whether to place it before Black Flag or after, so I wouldn't look too much into the fact that it's placed higher up. I honestly do not have much to say for Rogue's parkour that I've already not said in the Black Flag part. I guess it's just personal preference at this point. The assets in Black Flag are reused in Rogue, with a few exceptions in Shay's parkour animations. But other than that, parkour itself is identical to Black Flag. The variety of environments in Rogue, in my opinion, ever so slightly come out on top compared to Black Flag's environment. 
points, where only Havana was a standout city for parkour for me in that game. Rooftop traversal, just like Black Flag, is pretty solid. And there are a few cities in the game that accommodate this aspect quite well. So yeah, I would not really look into where I place both Black Flag and Rogue in this video, as they are pretty much identical to one another for parkour itself. So let's just move on. Okay now moving on to Assassin's Creed 3. This is a game that often gets lumped together with Black Flag and Rogue when discussing parkour. And whilst I do agree that these games do perform almost the same, I'd like to argue that Assassin's Creed 3 stands out a lot more in this trio. It's not just about the mechanics of parkour itself, but also how the game presents it and utilises its environments to make the experience of parkour pretty good. Assassin's Creed 3 marked the debut of the Anvil Next engine in the series, an engine that would power several subsequent games after. Yet surprisingly, it's the parkour in Assassin's Creed 3 that remains the most enjoyable, even with the same engine used in the games after it. Assassin's Creed 3 introduced a change to the controls to make free running and jumping a lot simpler by combining them into one button. The game looks better with new smoother animations for actions like running through water, climbing through narrow cracks and moving through trees. At this point in the franchise, the parkour definitely looked the best and felt so smooth when moving with Connor. The game also introduced a mechanic where catching onto ledges depended on your movement direction. This pretty much got rid of the option to grab ledges behind you or reach out to catch one at a distance. The main thing that made me place Assassin's Creed 3 pretty much in the middle of this video is the environments that the game takes us to. Parkouring in the frontier especially was very smooth and made for a pretty fun experience. The large open setting on paper would make you think that it's not suitable for parkour, but the roots on the tree branches, the cliffs and just the urban environment in general transformed the frontier into a parkour playground. The game links running and jumping to the same button, reducing the chance of accidentally leaping off a tree or a cliff, though you can still choose to jump manually and face the consequences of fall damage. The updated animations make Kana move more in a fluid and skilled way, cutting down on the awkwardness seen in previous games. New moves such as dropping directly from a ledge, leaping over small barriers and ducking under obstacles add some sort of flair and make movement feel more natural. You can also run straight through open doors and windows which looks cool in terms of animations but it requires zero player input so I guess there's that. One thing I don't see many people talk about is how the climbing in Assassin's Creed 3 became more realistic. Now what I mean by that is through the introduction of rock wall climbing which was designed to affect actual rock climbing techniques with Connor's movements and the placement of his hands and feet responding dynamically to the environment. There's a new button to help you get down from buildings more easily, but it can also cause you to tackle a guard by mistake and completely blow your cover. Now despite a few issues such as occasionally sacrificing control precision, the movement in Assassin's Creed 3 for me represents a high point in the series at that time. The game not only looks better but feels better. It offers a parkour experience that is both visually appealing and satisfying to engage with. A highlight of Assassin's Creed 3 for me that brilliantly showcases its parkour mechanics is found within the Captain Kidd's treasure missions. During these missions, the game takes us to a diverse set of locations. These locations not only look good, but the parkour sequences involved in almost all of them is pretty fun. A standout level was the Mayan Temple mission where parkour was at the center of it. We pretty much had to master back ejects and side ejects, navigate without falling and puzzle out the best routes to progress. It's great to see that Ubisoft during this time cared about how Assassin's Creed 3's parkour system would blend into their level designs, and these Captain Kid missions were a perfect example of that. It's a similar case to Assassin's Creed Revelations. I'll talk more about how that game blends both parkour and level designs quite well, but for now, Assassin's Creed 3's parkour is placed here in the video. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Now this is the one that will get the dislikes going. I know what you're thinking. Assassin's Creed Unity's parkour is not number one? That's outrageous. But hear me out. Let me explain. And then once I've explained, it's up to you if you still want to comment that hate comment. Now Unity's parkour to a lot of people is the staple of this franchise. It's what most Assassin's Creed parkour videos on YouTube consist of. And I can see why. In simple terms, it looks the best. The setting of Paris is very impressive and it's definitely the most realistic representation of a city in the series, and parkour does have a pretty impressive say on that. But there are some simple issues that make it not as good as the earlier games. The main problem is that the parkour relies too much on animations instead of actual mechanics, and that's some major issue as nowadays, all it takes is for something to look good to get people's attention. The main issue lies in the system's heavy reliance on animations, rather than player controlled mechanics. This design choice means that actions like manual side ejects or ledge grabs were at the mercy of the game's AI. These things are possible, but the game does such a terrible job of explaining it. Unfortunately, the AI that's supposed to figure out what you want to do does not always get it right. Sometimes Arno can jump unrealistically long distances because the AI thinks that's your intended direction. In fact, this pretty much defies all sorts of gravity because apparently Arno is now a superhero and can jump distances that are well over 10 feet long. But hey, at least the animation of his robes when he jumps looks cool, right? 
and then sometimes when he's running, he'd not be able to make a simple 3 or 4 foot jump. It just felt too inconsistent in that aspect. Now sure, I get it. Unity is the game you play or watch when it comes to parkour. I mean after all, nobody wants to see a parkour montage from a game that's made in 2007. But these Unity parkour videos you see are merely for aesthetic purposes, instead of showcasing freedom of movement. Another reason why I place Unity at 5th instead of any higher is because the actual parkour system is highly automated, as the game's engine itself guides you to almost effortlessly. You can only move in the direction you desire if the game's unreliable targeting system and its built-in safeguards decides to allow it. Now personally, I like to think having great animations does not have to make the game harder to control. Ubisoft decided to make it less likely for players to fail, which ended up limiting how free you feel in Unity. It's possible to have smooth parkour and great animations in a system that listens to what the player wants to do, not the other way around. But it looks like Ubisoft did not want to go in that direction at all for some reason. The movement in Unity can also feel relatively slow and heavy, which is not helped by the game sometimes not responding quickly to your commands. There is a little bit of freedom in how you can cancel some actions, but it's limited and does not happen often. The game does try to make navigating around more predictable and smooth by giving you control over moving up, down or straight ahead. But the game's controls and the way it automates movement can make it hard to move exactly how you want to, especially if you're trying to do something very specific. Now I do get why a lot of people love Unity's parkour. Arno is a character that moves faster and more smoothly than other assassins. There's a special button for descending down buildings as well as up. There's also a shit ton of exciting animations for different situations as you parkour through Paris. Verticality is a positive and if anything makes you fine tune your controls based on the environment. But for my personal preference, I think Unity's parkour is slightly overrated. It's not bad at all, it's just not the best in the franchise. Okay, now at fourth place, we have the very first Assassin's Creed game. This might be a shock considering that you'd often expect the very first thing that's created to be more of a blueprint and not hold up well at all. But surprisingly, Assassin's Creed 1's parkour is pretty impressive. The cornerstone of parkour is player freedom, and this game delivers on that front, unlike Unity. Now, I won't sugarcoat it, the controls can feel clunky, which is expected from a 2007 release. But once you get the hang of them, the free running experience in Assassin's Creed 1 is genuinely enjoyable. There's something about vaulting over obstacles, escaping from enemies and finding hiding spots that makes the fluidity and freedom of movement feel fun in this game. The parkour system in Assassin's Creed 1 is capable of verticality with holdable surfaces, executing side and back checks, and even leaping from any ledge, which for some reason Ubisoft removed in a few games after. The game allows us to hang from ledges too, and even lets us have the option to fall at will, and while falling, reach out to catch a hold and prevent a fall, even performing this maneuver backwards, which is something a lot of the games in this video do not allow us to do. This game also includes a feature that lets you jump manually. You may think, well, that's a very basic thing to say, and yes, I do agree, but a lot of the games in this series don't offer this, and you'll see there's a massive difference between being able to jump manually and not being able to jump manually. This makes the game's movement system very flexible and varied, giving you a lot of freedom to move around in different ways. That's why Assassin's Creed 1's parkour is quite special in a way, because it hardly limits what you can do, and it allows you to utilize any movement option almost all the time. Of course, since Assassin's Creed 1 is a very old game, this does mean that features like animations or camera control are not exactly the greatest, and do get expanded upon in games after. If I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure this game was created before mocap was even implemented into video games. Or maybe it was just emerging, but Ubisoft did not use it. Now despite me enjoying the parkour in this game, one pretty important problem is how Altair suddenly slows down in the middle of long jumps, which is a bit confusing and annoying. The game doesn't properly teach you how to use the sprint button carefully, which may result in accidental actions because we tend to keep sprinting. To put it into words, the best way to look at parkour in this game is if I ever made a slight misstep, it's 100% my fault. However, in a game like Assassin's Creed Unity, if I made a misstep, then 90% of the time it's the game's fault and the parkour engine itself. When it comes to the world of Assassin's Creed 1, I feel like the parkour is complemented well by the likes of Jerusalem, Acre and Damascus. Because aside from being historical cities, they also do offer great opportunities to parkour in. Now that brings me to the top 3, and here is where I find parkour in the Assassin's Creed franchise to be at its peak, and that is the Ezio trilogy. Now I already know, I can see the comments calling me an Ezio fanboy and whatnot, and I'm already mentally prepared to see those. Now I know at the start of this video, I said I would not group any games together, but I feel like Assassin's Creed 2 and Brotherhood are the only two games that genuinely should be grouped together. Both games are similar in parkour, similar in settings, and a similar increase in gameplay. Assassin's Creed 2 refined the parkour mechanics from Assassin's Creed 1, and expanded upon quite a few mechanics. Ezio 
Ichio as a character showcases greater agility than Altair, with the ability to one, actually be able to navigate through water, swing around corners, and even propel himself onto rooftops using rope lines. There was a much notable increase in speed when it comes to climbing up walls when compared to Assassin's Creed 1, and it made parkour feel more responsive at times. Now, a key feature that we saw in Assassin's Creed 1 was the vault feature, and this was a feature that was strangely removed in Assassin's Creed 2, but the introduction of other features like climb leaps and increased speed kind of made up for that removal. Assassin's Creed 2 also allowed you to grab onto ledges at any point. When it comes to Brotherhood, the one major upgrade from Assassin's Creed 2 was how much quicker Ezio was when climbing up walls, which was a great improvement to have. I love how these games encourage you to use quick jumps to faster, which works well and feels rewarding. If there was a ledge that seemed too high to reach, simply quick jump and you're able to grab it ever so slightly. The game gave us a lot of freedom, allowing for the cancellation of certain moves, complete utilisation of the surrounding environment, and precise control over every action. If you ever accidentally misjudged a move, it could result in a fatal fall, adding a much needed sense of high risk, high reward, which was not present in games after. Both Assassin's Creed 2 and Brotherhood are games that are notable for the improved map design, with taller and more varied buildings that create challenges especially around viewpoints. If I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure majority of the viewpoints in these games require some sort of park or challenge to get to, and while you might dislike that, I personally found it was quite fun to do. There's also assassin tombs filled with climbing puzzles that reward you with currency and a special armor set when finished. These types of features make parkouring around feel more rewarding, and actually encourage you to explore and interact with the game's world. Cities like Venice and Rome both catered to parkour quite well, as buildings were densely spread out and there was countless opportunities for parkour in these two games. One massive addition that Assassin's Creed 2 introduced was the climb leap as I mentioned earlier. This was a mechanic that was unlocked during one of the Rosa missions I believe. This mechanic is 50-50 for a lot of people. I personally like it because it has a different approach to movement as it allows you to vertically jump to catch a ledge while simultaneously parkouring. Yes, it's not the fastest way to move up and using it too much can make movement look less appealing on the eye, but these issues are seen as very tiny nitpicks and flaws in a generally well-made parkour system. For me, Assassin's Creed 2 is a game that made the parkour system from Assassin's Creed 1 look like its younger brother, and it upgraded on it ever so slightly. It performs better technically, looks better, and feels better. The two-year development of Assassin's Creed 2 compared to its usual one year definitely played a big part in its gameplay upgrades, especially parkour. And then Assassin's Creed Brotherhood ever so slightly upgraded on Assassin's Creed 2's parkour and refined it to allow for quicker ascending and more fluidity in back and side ejects. So yeah, I feel like it's only right to group both the Italian Renaissance settings as its own segment. And last but certainly not least is Assassin's Creed Revelations, the game where I found parkour to be the pinnacle of this franchise. The game where parkour to me felt like it had no flaws at all. Assassin's Creed Revelations marked the ending of the Ezio trilogy. We saw a much older Ezio in his early 50s. Even though Ezio was getting older, he remained just as agile over the years. And this game added a new tool to help him adapt to the setting of Constantinople, and that was the Hookblade. This was one of the main reasons I love parkour in this game. But before I talk about parkour and the Hookblade, I first must talk about Constantinople. Revelations did not just change the setting, it also changed how we move around. Constantinople was bigger than the game before being Rome, but that's mainly because Rome had a lot of countryside with the Colosseum just plopped in the middle. Constantinople on the other hand was a city full of small dense buildings all the way through, making it a more packed and lively setting than anything we've seen since the very first Assassin's Creed game. If anything, the city of Constantinople kind of reminds me of Mirage's Baghdad in a way. The city was designed with streets that offered lots of different levels, which meant we had to navigate through much more complex paths. This design made parkouring around the city definitely enjoyable. The parkour in Revelations maintained that same speed from the previous game, and it also retains all the features. New parkour animations were introduced to fit Ezio's changed demeanor, and also new climbing animations were also introduced. Just like Black Flag, rooftop parkour is its main focus here, and the routes and paths that you're able to take increase the enjoyment of parkour. The hook blade was a new addition to the series, and one that I'd love to see return in a future Assassin's Creed game. In fact, I talked about it in my 10 features that need to return video, which I do recommend you check out. The hook blade not only improved upon parkour, but also offered new ways to escape enemies such as pulling down scaffolds to block pursuers. This tool was created to speed up travel, especially with ziplines set up all over Constantinople. You were able to slide on the zipline and drop down to stealthily take out guards below, which is a technique known as zipline assassination. When it comes to movement, the hook blade helped in many agile and parkour related moves such as climbing up walls quickly, similar to a jump climb action and also its ability to execute long jumps, allowing you to latch onto far off ledges. This is where high risk high reward is at 
at its peak, because that split second of whether you could catch a ledge was nerve wracking, but it was definitely worth it. This tool also allows you to quickly get to a rooftop by grabbing the edge, without wasting time finding a place to stand and pull yourself up, plus it worked with corner chase breakers, letting you swing and jump to another rooftop, avoiding the need to turn the corner. It's pretty crazy because all of these features, yet it still keeps the retaining features of a hidden blade. Now one aspect of Revelations that stood out to me the most in terms of parkour were the two missions. We saw two missions previously in games before this, but Revelations took it to new heights. These two missions integrate parkour seamlessly with the environment of the tomb, whether it's hundreds of feet under the ground or in a massive building like the Hagia Sophia. Every tomb mission in Revelations puts its focus on parkour first, and it ensured that you need to use all the parkour moves you've learned to progress. These two missions pushed you to perform precise side and back checks, daring leaps over gaping chasms where every jump could be your last. It's these moments where skill trumps all that sets Revelations parkour apart from other games. These moments made the parkour more thrilling because you need to be careful about how far and when you jumped. Unlike the parkour in the later games, where you might just hold the run button and the game does the rest, the parkour in Revelations depended on player skill. So with that said, I'm placing Assassin's Creed Revelations as my personal favourite parkour system in the entire franchise. So there you have it. Now please do remember this entire video is my own personal preference. I know a majority of people would place a game like Unity as their personal favourite and that's perfectly fine. After all, parkour is a feature that suits the player itself and it's not something like a story or a piece of side content where everybody would have similar opinions on. So what's your top 3 favourite parkour systems in the entire franchise? I'm quite curious to see other people's responses. Anyway, be sure to check out my other video on which Assassin's Creed game has the best combat and stuff as those two videos follow a similar start to this one. With that said, I'll see you in the next one.